Remy Inocencio is here with a cargo craze to beat the clock. Remy. Sherry, yeah, thank you. You know, just imagine crossing the Pacific right now. Our Air China planes, just like this, full of cargo, along with uh, South Korean ships from Hyundai, uh, crossing the Pacific as well with a uh, freight just full of uh, uh, Chinese made goods uh, trying to get their way by September 24th by Monday or possibly if they don't make that and very likely if they're they've just started they probably won't uh, trying to get there by the turn of the new year. Now this of course is all uh, related to Trump's tariffs the 200 billion dollars that we have been reporting all this week. Um, it's really interesting hop into the Bloomberg terminal because all the uh, goods that we were talking about uh, here can really be seen in the ECTR function of the Bloomberg terminal. I've set this uh, to the United States and these are the imports by country. Uh, China here we know a little bit more than 500 billion dollars. It's really interesting because all the consumer goods that we're talking about here that could be impacted are actually about 25 percent of these total imports here uh, coming in at about 150 160 billion dollars. Let's go and flip up the screen here and I want to show you uh, the bar chart really for the breakdown of the stuff that is is made in China that could be impacted. So cell phones and other household goods, obviously one of the biggest, the biggest here on the chart really, um, $70 billion is their worth. Toys, games, sporting goods also from China uh, coming in at about $25 billion. Again, all told $150 billion, $160 billion out of that $505 billion in terms of imports uh, coming into the United States. So a lot, of, uh, a lot of numbers, a lot of value are at stake here. And really, if um, I was liking it earlier to, to if China was sort of like Santa's workshop, which it sort of is when you're um, going ahead to the holiday season here on December 25th, of course. Um, but um, if, if China, if Beijing could say, it's time to hurry up, it's time to get going, he'd be saying to all those elves, uh, you better get cracking before the deadline hits uh, by the end of this year. Yeah, literally, Sanders Workshop, if you've ever seen pictures of those uh, factories and, and the shops in Yiwu that sell all the Christmas trees yeah. and decorations and whatnot. Um, Ramey, this really does go a long way to explain why the ports along the U.S. West Coast have been so busy lately. In August, we actually saw record imports arriving at the Port of Oakland. Yeah, uh, really, that is the general trend. Follow me along this way, because uh, not just the Port of Oakland, the Port of Los Angeles, really the ports all, all along uh, the U.S. West Coast are seeing this big uh, jump in terms of volume, in terms of the goods that are arriving uh, from China. Right behind me, uh, this is uh, some video of the Port of Los Angeles, which is the biggest U.S. port. Uh, now, what's interesting also is that while we're seeing all these volumes rise, of course, that does demand a premium in terms of getting them over there. Hop back into the Bloomberg terminal, please. And I want to show you the freight charges going from Asia to the United States, specifically from Shanghai to Los Angeles. That's in white. Meantime, the Shanghai to Rotterdam route uh, in terms of uh, the, the rates are actually falling. You can see here right now we're almost nearing 2400 bucks. This is for a 40 foot container, Heidi. Uh, even just a few months ago in July, it was uh, just at the $1,600 mark. In fact, the $2,400 mark uh, for this container is actually at its highest ever since December 2014. And we can really see that divergence. That's uh, all of the efforts, all of the goods, all of the energy right now as we race towards uh, the end of this year, towards uh, uh, those Trump tariffs uh, coming online, that uh, this divergence could very well continue.